There will probably never be a time in history where Nintendo won't be viewed as a family-friendly company. Not now, not in the past, and certainly not in the future. But despite this appeal bringing in most of their success, Nintendo has attempted to shake off this reputation in the past to no avail. Hell, even Miyamoto wanted Mario to stop being so goddamn happy all the time. I mean, look at this freak. The hell's the matter with you? There's a fucking pandemic going on now, you sick, demented fuck. Alas, their attempts at seeming edgy and cool for the hip teens has always seemed to fail. Remember when the Wii U was announced and they really tried shoving those M-rated games down our throats like, yeah, this ain't your daddy's Nintendo, this is Nintendo men. Well, whatever. Nobody has ever been convinced otherwise, but it's attempts like these that often lead to some pretty surprising games, such as Eternal Darkness and No More Heroes. Sure, they're not games made by Nintendo, but they did make their appearance exclusively on Nintendo's console, and both turned out to be very unique games for the time, and that solidified them as cult classics. But then, of course, we have those with potential for greatness, that were quickly snuffed out for no reason or another. One of my favorite cases being with Project Hammer, a game that was going to be an exclusive first party M-rated Nintendo action game that was sadly shut down due to incompetence and slight racism on Nintendo's part. I talked about that last year, so check it out by clicking the link in the top right. But then there's games like Sadness, a survival horror game which would have come out for Nintendo Wii that almost no one has ever heard of. Seriously, I've never even heard of this game, but it was a game that garnered quite a bit of attention from the public when trailers showed just how it was going to work, and it was going to take advantage of the Wiimote and the design of the game showcasing you how you would feel immersed with the motion controls. The aesthetic of the game being black and white also caught people's attention as it was a unique prospect at the time. It was announced in 2006 where the game developers Nebris said it was going to be an exclusive Nintendo Revolution game, back when the Wii was known as the Revolution anyways. The first concept trailer was released later that year, and it was revealed that Nebris would be working with Frontline Studios and Digital Amigos, who would be working on the programming and the visuals respectively. They had slated the game to be released sometime the following year, but that sort of drew some criticism as the game's release was nearing and yet there were no official trailers or gameplay or even screenshots of the game whatsoever. This led many people to believe that the game was nothing more than just vaporware. Especially since that very year it was supposed to be released, Frontline Studios left the projects, saying that there were artistic differences between the two companies. This led to the delay of the game to be pushed back all the way till 2009, but by this point, Nebris had made so many promises that were never fully realized that the trust for the company was at an all-time low. Promises of trailers that were never released, appearances at conferences that were just never fulfilled, uh, dismissing claims of vaporware that lacked any hard proof of the game ever being made. I mean, it was just, it was a mess. Honestly, if you were skeptical of the game ever existing, I wouldn't blame you. A game with literally no gameplay trailer, and not even a single screenshot of the game existing? I mean, was this game ever actually being made? Well, According to Adam Arder Antolowski, love the alliteration by the way, a former scriptwriter of the game, the game had apparently been delayed several times due to failures in meeting deadlines caused by several disputes over the game's design. Basically, according to Antolowski, nobody could really figure out what the game was going to be like. Yeah, it was supposed to be a survival horror, but nobody in the span of four years could ever really figure out what the gameplay would be. In fact, the only thing they ever made in 3D was just a minecart. That's, that's it. Like, three to four years of development led to the creation of a minecart. Wonderful. The only thing they were able to finish was the script and the concept design, and that was all within the first year of development, which, while not necessarily expeditious, was at least something. If this were a movie or even a show, that'd be a lot, but this was a video game. There was so much left in production that it's no wonder people call this a public embarrassment. Even the music composer got sick of waiting and released some of his unfinished works to the public just a few months before Nebris dissolved into the European Center of Games as a coordinator. Yeah, the whole development process was a mess and a half. 
So many stories of infighting, creative differences, incompetent staff, and a slew of other claims that I'm sure is just lurking around and untold. And if you really want to get a glimpse at how inept and terrible these developers really were, then look no further than the other games they had in development during this short life that they had. Out of the four projects they ever publicly announced, only one of them was ever developed and released. It's called Double Bloob, and it's a super generic game where you, well, I mean, do, do you remember Bubble Trouble, like from Newgrounds and like Armor Games? Yeah, yeah you remember Bubble Trouble? Well, it, it's basically Bubble Trouble, and it's made, of course, by Bloober Team. Oh, wait. Bloober team? That, that sounds familiar. Wait, who are they? Well, here's the good news. Remember when I mentioned the original developer dissolved? Well, where did all the devs go? Well, all those devs all headed to Bloober team. You know, the guys who made this fucking game. And after a few years of sadness's cancellation and years of shovelware, the team went ahead and developed horror games to great success. Not just any horror games, mind you. Highly praised titles such as Layers of Fear, Observer, and Blair Witch. They even have a new game coming out soon made exclusively for the Xbox Series X and S called The Medium. And it looks pretty interesting, honestly. So, in many ways, Sadness's cancellation was probably the best thing that could have happened to Team Bloober and horror fans all over. Or, maybe it could have been one of the greatest horror games on the Wii, which surprisingly was a host of pretty great horror games. Well, give or take one or two. Ultimately, we can never be sure if this game was ever going to be that great. Bloober Team has even stated that they've bought the rights to Sadness, only to be immediately shut down by higher-ups that say that the statement isn't true. So, who knows what'll happen. Personally, I think I'll just stick with what they've already made, instead of hoping for something that might have been garbage. A minecart. Seriously, a mine Four years! A minecart! That's so stupid! Oh lord.